الى عدم التشبث بمعادلات خشبيه جامده. الافق ليس مسدودا. Good afternoon on this Thursday, March 6th. I'm Yumna Naufal, and these are today's headlines. An international conference hosted in Paris voices verbal support for Lebanon's army and economy as the country grapples with the spillover effects of the war in neighboring Syria. Syria launches a series of airstrikes targeting remote areas in the Baqa Valley border town of Al-Sid. And pro-Moscow authorities in Crimea ask Russia to examine a request for their region to join the Russian Federation. President Michel Slayman is reiterating that the Babda Declaration holds greater political significance than the new government's policy statement. He told reporters in Paris that a flexible phrasing of the statement will be drafted in order to resolve the dispute over the resistance, meaning Hezbollah. Predicted that Hezbollah would criticize him for his position on the resistance. Commenting on the presidential elections, he stated that they will be held on time out of his own desire to hold them and because of the international community's support to Lebanon. Live on location uh, right now, our very own Noura reports from Paris. Noor, can you hear me? Yes, hello, Yimna. Hi, Noor, in the Daily Star today, there was an article titled, Paris Summit Proves All Talk But No Checkbooks. Is that what is going on over there right now? Well, it's no checkbook for now, if you want. Um, the uh, International Support Group for Lebanon yesterday created this fund uh, that should be should allow to fund uh, to finance projects, humanitarian projects, uh, help uh, with the uh, Syrian refugee crisis as well. So it's an open fund for the countries to contribute money uh, as as much as they want, really. So no money was pledged yesterday. That's true, but it's an open fund, and the money should start coming in very soon. Uh, President Sleiman spoke of that today, actually. He held an informal meeting at his hotel in Paris with the, uh, the Lebanese press delegation just before leaving uh, Paris. He, uh, he went through the conclusions of the international uh, group. Uh, he spoke of this fund and he also spoke of, of the uh, military aid to the Lebanese army, um, saying that he has requested for a wi wide-ranging aid. He hasn't asked for anything specific. He just wants enough equipment, enough armament to really boost the capacities of the Lebanese army. Regarding the internal front, as you said, uh, President Sleiman is adamant for the uh, presidential elections to be held on time. He is also confident that the, the, um, that the uh, ministerial statement will be, will, be, uh, will be done soon, will be ready soon, um, so Lebanon can respect its, uh, its constitutional deadlines, so the parliamentary and the presidential elections. He also responded indirectly to Hezbollah's recent criticism, saying the president will not be intimidated. Now, according to our sources close to the French presidency, the, uh, the countries participating in yesterday's group said they want Lebanon's next president to have these same qualities as President Sleiman. Noor, I want to ask one more thing. I know you had an exclusive uh, interview with Foreign, Min Foreign Affairs Minister, Mr. Gibran Basile, who told you about this first trip to Paris and what we can take from it. What did he reveal to you? Well, that's right, Tim. I asked him how did his first trip as foreign minister go? He said it was very positive. He said that although this was not a pledging conference, as we said, it was very important for the international community uh, to show its support for Lebanon in these difficult times. Uh, he, he said it's important that Lebanon has received all the support from the international community, especially given the regional crisis and the internal Lebanese, Lebanese problems that are currently taking place in Lebanon. He said he hopes this will open for a much needed period of stability so Lebanon can make progress uh, regarding its uh, democratic status. Thank you, Noor. Thank you so much. In other local news, Interior Minister Nuhad al mashnu held talks with Free Patriotic Movement Chief MP Michel Aoun. Mashnu, who is loyal to the future movement, refused to disclose to reporters at Rabie the context of his talks with Aoun after a 45-minute meeting. Mashnu only said that he cannot make any statement in the presence of Aoun. 
Earlier this morning, a Jamhuria newspaper reported that discussions between the political rivals over the ministerial policy statement witnessed progress at night. The committee tasked with drafting the policy statement will hold its ninth meeting on Friday, but it has so far failed to narrow differences on the resistance clause after the March 14 alliance stressed that the resistance should be placed under the authority of the Lebanese state. Syria launched a series of airstrikes targeting remote areas in the Baqa Valley border town of Arsail. The airstrikes on Ras' Sirj and Iqbat al Baida, located along Arsail's outskirts, did not cause any casualties, according to sources. Arsail Mayor Ali Hujairi said that the warplanes carried out three airstrikes between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. After the airstrike, three rockets from Syria hit the area between Janta and Nabishit. Two border villages in the Baqa Valley where Hezbollah is known to have training camps. The Nusra Front claimed the responsibility for the attack in a statement posted on its Twitter account and promised further operations against the party and called on Sunni soldiers to defect from the army, which it said was taking orders from Hezbollah directly. Syrian planes have frequently targeted Asail, a predominantly Sunni area known for its strong support for the Syrian opposition. Coming up next, a new website is making it easier for tourists to get much-needed relief when traveling in an unfamiliar city. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Crimean parliament in Ukraine has voted unanimously in favor of joining Russia, with officials asking Moscow to examine their request. Reports said that parliament had adopted a motion for the strategic peninsula to join the Russian Federation. The vote coincided with an announcement that a referendum on Crimea's status was being brought forward to March 16. The region's Deputy Prime Minister, Rustam Temirgaliev, said there would be two questions on the ballot. The parliament in Crimea, which has afforded some autonomy under current Ukrainian law, voted 78 with eight abstentions in favor of holding the referendum. In Crimea, about 11,000 pro-Russian troops are in control of all access to the peninsula and have blocked all Ukrainian military bases that have not yet surrendered according to the regional leader, Sergei Aksionov. European Union leaders gathered in Brussels for an emergency summit to decide on sanctions against Russia over its military incursion in Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. The 28-nation bloc is seeking a unified response to the conflict unfolding just beyond its eastern border in Ukraine. The EU on Monday told Russia to withdraw its troops on the Crimean Peninsula to its barracks or face sanctions. Among the initial punitive measures under consideration were the suspension of talks with Russia on visa liberalization and on economic agreement. We've got to make sure we get Russia and Ukraine talking to each other. Second, we've got to demonstrate here in the European Union that we will help the Ukrainian people in their hour of need. And third, and just as vital, we need to send a very clear message to the Russian government that what has happened is unacceptable and should have consequences. And were further action to, take, to be taken, that would be even more unacceptable and would require even more consequences. All of those three things matter. Those are the things we'll be discussing here today, and I'm hopeful of a positive outcome. We discussed in this uh, regard, logically, question of sanctions and the list of possible sanctions, and uh, we agreed that in case uh, they are unavoidable, they should be precise and target, targeted sanctions leading to reflection on the other side. I give you a guarantee, and you know it, this parliament was always on the side of a free and democratic, self-determined Ukrainian nations. We fought for it in the last years. And I give you here public assurance of our parliament. We are behind you and your government, and we support with all our means that uh, there is a peaceful and democratic future in your country. Former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton reiterated U.S. President Barack Obama's assertion that the Russian intervention in Crimea violates international law. Clinton's latest remarks come a day after she likened Putin's actions on Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula to those of Adolf Hitler back in the 1930s. She is a presidential 2016 presidential contender, and she said during her speech at the University of California at Los Angeles that she was not making a comparison, although Russia's actions were reminiscent of claims Germany made. What I said yesterday um, is that the claims by President Putin and other Russians 
uh, that they had to go into Crimea um, and maybe further into eastern Ukraine uh, because they had to protect the Russian uh, minorities. And that is reminiscent of claims that were made back in the 1930s when uh, Germany under uh, the Nazis uh, kept talking about how they had to protect German minorities in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, and elsewhere throughout Europe. Niger has extradited Muammar Gaddafi's son Saadi to the Libyan capital Tripoli, according to the Libyan government. The third son of the former Libyan leader is being held in Hadaba prison in the capital. Saadi was granted entry to Niger on humanitarian grounds after the Gaddafi government was toppled. Niger had previously refused to hand over Saadi, who fled south to the West African state back in September of 2011, as Libyan forces gained the upper hand over his father's forces because he feared he would face execution in Libya. In 2011, Interpol issued a red notice asking its member states to arrest Saadi with a view to extradition if they found him on their territory. In December of 2011, Mexican authorities foiled a plot to smuggle Saadi from Niger into Mexico. But before the revolution, Saadi was best known for captaining Libya's national football team and making appearances for Italian Serie A sides Perugia and Udinese. Now, it has been the ruin of many a pleasant outing, nature calls, but there's nowhere to go. Now a new website is making it easier for tourists to get much-needed relief when traveling in an unfamiliar city or town. The site, called AirPNP, is modeled after the popular lodging website Airbnb, in which homeowners make their spare rooms or unoccupied dwellings available to paying lodgers for a fee, often considerably less than the cost of a hotel stay. In a similar vein, users of AirPNP are matched with bars, restaurants, offices, and homes where they can pay to use the loo, usually for a fee of $5 or less. The idea was the brainchild of Max Godin and Travis Laurendine, two New Orleans natives. They call themselves entrepreneurs who have encountered the problem frequently over the years during the city's riotous Mardi Gras festivities. And on that note, our bulletin ends for today. Let me remind you of our headlines. An international conference hosted in Paris voices verbal support for Lebanon's army and economy as the country grapples with the spillover effects of the war in neighboring Syria. Syria launches a series of airstrikes targeting remote areas in the Bukha Valley border town of Arsil. And pro-Moscow authorities in Crimea ask Russia to examine a request for their region to join the Russian Federation. Those are your headlines live on Future Television in Beirut. I'm Yuna Nofel, and I'll see you again tomorrow for what's making headlines here and around the world. Good night. A lot of places must do them.